control decks that have a boatload of removal. Where your creatures, for the most part, don't even have text. It's just, I will bolt that, I'll helix that, fatal push it. And eventually you just, I don't know, you draw Vile 2 or land 5. And are you your, your, uh, your matchups against Collected Company combo decks okay? It's, it's a little scary. Yeah, it's a little scary. But your, your, uh, your Thalia's, and, well, your Thalia's aren't great. Your Meddling Mages are very good because they don't have a lot of removal. I don't think I'd want to play against Todd Stevens. Sure. I don't think I'd want to play against him. He's got a lot of stuff going on there. We are in game two. Colin Roundtree currently up a game. Champion of the Parish looks like a 2-2. Vile on two. Freebooter is taking a fatal push. And a couple lands on the battle there for Colin. For Jason Fimister. Bunch of cards in the graveyard because Hollow One's doing its thing. Flameblade Adept. And now a fatal push. Going to take care of the Freebooter to get a fatal push back. Looks like he's got a Grim Lava Mancer to to play, and he does. And in comes the Flame Bladed Up for some amount of damage. Looks like it's just going to be one. Both these players look like they are working with uh, not a ton of resources. I suppose Colin has at least two cards in hand, and a Vile on two that is going to stay on two. Grim Lava Mancer, definitely a problematic card here. Oh, yeah. That's not a card humans is excited to play against at all. <laughs> Especially when the opponent has a Fatal Push in hand, too. Here's an activation of Vile. Well, you're going to name Fatal Push. Follow-up. All right, that was very important. Yeah. Lieutenant, very, very, very important. Yeah, pushing some... Key threats here outside of Lava Mancer range. It's mm -hmm. a big deal. It's a really nice treat and a really nice turn there for Round Tree. Ooh, Bolt's a nice draw. Bolt's basically a Bolt's a perfect draw. Yeah, you can pair that up uh, with your Lava Mancer to get rid of the champion of the parish before things get too out of control. Oh, we, we, we get to bolt the mage. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. We get to bolt the mage, push that right. one, and then Lava Mance, the lieutenant, and there goes your entire battlefield. Whew. That was a turn. Attack for one. All right, well, if you're calling now, you're looking for something a little bit bigger. Maybe old Mantis Rider shows up as he ticks the vial up to three. He was in good position. He's not as good a position now. He'll start by sacrificing a rising canopy. Just going to pass the turn back. Jason will draw. And he'll sacrifice the wooded foothills. And that is a Blood Crypt. <laughs> what comes next here for Jason? He must have drawn something of relevance. Well, he's just going to get in here for one. That explains it. Gurmag Angler. So with a little bit for the Lava Master to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got five cards in the graveyard right now. Roundtree have anything to violin on three? Not the worst spot for the Reflector Mage. It's at least large enough to survive a Lava Master activation and bounce the Gurmag Angler. All right, Vile's up to four now. Let's do a check. Is it is it Resto? Yeah, he's got two Restos. Freebooter going to come down. Trigger, Restoration Angel it. All right, pass the turn back. A 
Lava Mancer's going to kill that one. So Lava Mancer's basically out of fuel now. This will be an attack for six. Remember, Flame Blade Adept has Menace, and Angler is much too big for Restoration Angel to block. The follow-up looks like it might just be another Grim Lava Mancer. Yep. Roundtree going to keep that vial on four. I can't see it going any higher than that. Now, Colin is starting to get put between a rock and a hard place. He really needs to find Reflector Mage. Well, Reflector Mage might not exactly line up the right way at this point because the vial's gone over and he doesn't have a third land. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that, that to me is the, the prize here. You get the Gurmag Angler off the battlefield, you can start to block a little bit. There's Champion of the Parish. There is a land trigger. Going to fall down to six. Kite Sail Freebooter. Make that into a two. Ooh. Well. We are attacking. The 3 4 here is not a great blocker. I mean, you, you know, you don't really want to trade it off for something like a Depth plus a Lava Mancer activation and. Um, the, the, the long game is not getting good for you here, so I don't know if this is a likely to result in a win, but I think it's Roundtree's best line. It's definitely playing the win. Yeah. I'll give you that. Not going to win the game by sitting back. Tax step. Huh. All right. Well, he can't double block the um, the menace threat that puts him at lethal. Yep. If he blocks, if he chumps the angler and uh, blocks Lava Mancer, that's the second card in. Looks like he's just going to let Lava Mancer come through and hope that the Mister doesn't have a way to put a card in the graveyard. Another flame blade. Okay, out he's he's drawing live. Yeah. What can we? Draw? He's really excited about what he can draw. I guess Manish Rider. Sure. Oh, play to win indeed. Colin of Roundtree is going to win this game and matcher over Jason Feimister. Two games to zero. Humans going to take care of Black Red Hollow One. Played to win. That was great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I Roundtree took a couple lines there that maybe looked unorthodox, but he was in a really bad position. He knew exactly what he needed to draw. And uh, he, he had to fade basically the whole deck from Feimister's side because he can't beat... A faceless looting on that on that turn. Nothing that puts anything in the graveyard, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, but Finister drew one of the few cards in the deck that that wouldn't line up that turn. And uh, Roundtree drew exactly the right card. And he had to catch a lot of breaks to win that game. But he also put himself in a position to catch that break.